matter. Um, and we're going to film today just doing a video about these stupid masks, COVID-1984, and how we're going to burn this at the end of the video. But dad, take it away. I want to introduce you to my dad, Ed Bianco. Hey everybody, how you doing today? So I come out here today and help Rocco out. He uh, said he wanted me to talk a little bit about masks. Um, I'm an ex-Special Forces soldier, as an old medic, and uh, after I got out, uh, there was not much call for what I was doing back then, and uh, you had to have a nursing degree. So I got into occupational safety and health, and um, I worked on a hazmat team with a big engineering company out in Colorado, and we worked at places like the Rocky Mountain Arsenal, Rocky Flats Plant, Pentax Plant in Texas. Uh, all kinds of places, Washington State, um, uh, any place there was a government facility, we worked. We had a uh, we worked in the part of the firm that had uh, government contracts, and uh, my job was to go in and look at the area that we were trying to clean up, figure out what the contaminants were in that area, what we needed to wear to keep everybody safe when they were in the area working, and uh, to implement those plans. And so I had an opportunity to do that on a lot of different levels for small projects and for some pretty big ones. Uh, for one, we had the largest sampling program uh, in, the, uh, in the system for national pollution discharge and, elim and elimination systems and PDES permits. Uh, we also did uh, uh, sampling protocols for the Rocky Flats plant that was the largest operation uh, on the West Coast at that time. And so these are all super fun sites, and uh, they needed to be cleaned up, and the folks needed to be safe when they were working in there. So one of the things the company did for me was they sent me to uh, Cincinnati to uh, NIOSH, and NIOSH is the National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health, and they have classes there on different things that you can go and take. Uh, I went there for respiratory protection, for respiratory fit testing, and I also went there for industrial hygiene and some other things. Uh, really good school. Uh, usually they're about a week or two weeks long, very in-depth. And most corporations uh, want you to have these certifications before you can uh, actually work for them. You should already have this kind of stuff. So anyway, it's a good, it's a good class to have, very informative, and you have to know what you're doing. Uh, when you're putting these things on people because it's their life that's in your hands. So um, I guess one of the first things I'll tell you about respiratory protection is they go all the way from uh, protecting you in an environment where uh, we had, we worked on the most contaminated square mile on the face of the earth. Uh, that was out in Denver, Colorado, uh, right near Stapleton Airport at the Rocky Mountain Arsenal. Basin F, and uh, we had conditions out there that were just unimaginable, and uh, different wells that we had dug for monitoring, uh, if you opened the cap on the well and took a deep breath, you would take two steps and die, uh, and that is not a joke at all, that is absolutely no joke. Um, they made nerve gas there, uh, mustard gas, uh, white phosphorus, anything that kicks ass and takes a few dog tags, they made it out there, believe me. So uh, back in the day, uh, they had different ways of protecting guys. Uh, they didn't know some of the things that were going on, but these days, uh, they have a lot better idea. Back in 1972, President Nixon created uh, a thing called uh, Ni uh, NIOSH, I'm sorry, uh, EPA. Right. Environmental Protection Agency. And uh, the Environmental Protection Agency uh, spawned a few other things, uh, OSHA, Occupational Safety and Health Administration. And their job is to go and make sure that everybody is safe where they are working. And they came up with the controls for using respirators. And part of those are for these things, for these nuisance masks is what they're called in the industry. Um, and it's kind of a joke 
when people say, I had a mask on, and we say, what kind of mask were you wearing? And they show me one of these. And <laughs> this will protect you basically against nothing. Dust in the wind, particulate. And that's about it. And the reason for that is that there is no seal going on between this mask and your face. So if you put the mask on and you breathe in, the air is coming through the little holes in the mask. It's also coming in from all around the mask on the sides. And when we fit test people in industry, we make sure that all these gaps are closed. You have to have a clean shaven face. You can't take a fit test to wear a respirator in industry if you have a bearded face, you have to shave clean shaven every day or you don't get on the job site. Right. And, and these are all regulations that are mandated by the, the federal government. These are things that have been in the rules since 1972. This is a main point of the video here is to point that out, that they're just breaking the law, basically. They know what this mask protects you against and what it doesn't. And what it doesn't protect you against is COVID-19. It does absolutely nothing to keep you from getting COVID-19. Nothing. Now, again, it's called a nuisance mask. So if I put it over my face and you throw a bucket of dirt at me, I'm going to get dirt <laughs> all over my face except for where I'm holding this mask. <laughs> right. I'm still going to have dirt in my mouth, but... It didn't get all in my face like that. That's why this is good. Now, if you're under that, if you're, if you're in those circumstances, this is your mask. Okay, for anything else, that thing's worthless. It's COVID-1984. Like, you might as well wear this. Like, ooh, 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 you know? It's not doing anything. No, that's a mask, just like this. It's about the same, only there's no eye holes in it. Right. So, that thing's not going to do you any good. They know that. We know that. They would not allow that in any industry. And, and, and I'm really quite curious because I know what the insurance plans are for a lot of these large corporations. And they demand that the companies adhere to the CFRs. And yet they're allowing their employees to wear an inferior mask under the assumption that it's doing them some good. That's got to be against their their health and safety plans that they've already established that, that go by these rules. Like Hi I said, have been around since 1970. And the Hippocratic Oath. I mean, if they... Well, and you don't want to even get into the medical stuff because uh, when you use a mask, the first thing that you do is you look around your circumstances and make sure that you've done everything you can to make sure that the environment is lessened of whatever that is contaminant that you're worried about before you go to a mask. In other words, industrially speaking, health-wise, that's the last thing that we want to do is put a mask on somebody's face because of their health. The last thing. You have said to me, when you, when you go to a mask, you're telling me as an industrial hygiene guy that you've tried everything else, you've done everything engineering-wise, fans, moving outside, distance, all those things, you've exhausted all those things and nothing else will do, so you've gone to a mask. So at that point, you don't just throw up your hands, you go get a mask. And I'm not talking about this, I'm talking about something that you get fit tested for, something that you have to have a clean shaven face to wear, something that's really a lot harder to breathe through, but something that will stop COVID-19. Otherwise, it's just a joke. It's just making people feel safe for the sake of making them feel safe, I guess. Security theater. Right. And I, I just think, you know, for, for a short period of time to, to lessen the curve or whatever, uh, that's a fine idea. But after that curve, in other words, two or three months after it's been shunted and you're now able to take hospitals uh, at full speed for whatever, at that point, you get rid of them. They're, they're worthless. All they do is make it hard for people to breathe. 
uh, cause other problems physically that they may not have had because they had to wear the mask. Hypoxia. And there's there's just a ton of things that, that you can do. Some people find out that they have asthma that they never knew they had. When like they the lady that got tased recently. Uh, well, there's there's you know when you're starting to tase somebody for not wearing a mask, you're basically saying I'm willing to shoot you with a taser so that you won't get a disease that you might not know you even have. Gee, thanks. Pain compliance. I appreciate that. That's pain compliance. Yeah, they really did me a, a favor on that one. So, anyway, uh, I just, the way they're handling this whole thing is, is a little bit funky, and it's a bit of a lie. Um, somebody needs to come out and tell them that, you know, a, a flu, a flu micro, a, a flu particulate, uh, a particulate, a piece of flu. Like some RNA matter. First of all, it's aerosolized. Right. That's why you have it in the air is because you have to cough or sneeze to get it out into the air. Just breathing alone won't get it out there far enough. Just breathing is only going to get it out there a foot or two. But if you cough or sneeze, you can get it out there six feet. That's the six feet. So uh, that I will give you... Well, the six feet may block some particulates that you're coughing out. It, it may slow them down, but all they're going to do is go into that mask so that you rebreathe those flu particulates. And one of the big things that they're worried about now is that you get your loading dose of the flu when you get it. So let's pack it into this mask and breathe it all day when we get it. Well, why don't we do that? Yeah, uh, it's getting dank and nasty. Right, and they talk about they talk about germs. Excuse me, guys. People are wearing these things more than a few hours at a time. They're wearing them for weeks, and you know it. It's sitting on their dashboard, and they grab it before they go into the store, and then they throw it back up on the dashboard. Yuck! Yeah, well, that's what's happening. <laughs> you know it. I know it. It's the American gross. people know it. Oh, I know. It's All so right. it's filthy and. We're gonna burn. I'm gonna burn this mask just for the video. I just want to burn it because it's just a symbol at this point of tyranny. It's like the uh, mark of the beast because you can't purchase anything, you can't buy any items unless you have this this mark. Basically, there you go. I just I can't stand these masks, and I just love seeing it burn. I really do. It's a perfect end to a video. <laughs> so let's follow the law, guys. And let's stop with all this COVID police state theater. And once they start doing pain compliance measures, that's when we really need to start waking up and saying no to these masks.